tribe of people in a place that was bounded on three sides by impenetrable forests and on the fourth by the steppe. They were a strong, brave and cheerful people. But evil times came upon them. Other tribes came warring against them and drove them into the depths of the forest. The forest was dark and swampy, for it was very ancient, and the boughs of the trees were so closely interwoven that they shut out the view of the sky, and the sun's rays did all they could to pierce the thick foliage and reach the waters of the swamp. And wherever they reached those waters, poisonous vapours arose, and the people began to get sick and die. to get out of the forest, but there were only two ways. One was to go back over the road they'd come, but at the end of it strong and vicious foes awaited them. The other was to push forward through the forest, but there they'd encounter the giant trees, whose mighty branches were closely entwined, and whose gnarled roots were sunk deep into the mire of the bogs. They were a brave people, and they would have fought to the death with those who had once defeated them, had they not feared being wiped out in the fight. They had their forefathers' behests to defend, and if they perished, their behests would perish with them. So they sat pondering their fate through the long nights, with the poisonous vapours rising around them, and the forest singing its mournful song and the shadows of the fires leaped about them in a soundless dance, and it seemed as if it weren't mere shadows dancing, but the evil spirits of forest and bog celebrating their triumph.
Alexander Nesterov, a junior research assistant at the Pole 21 Polar Station, is due at coordinates 86 degrees 21 north, 74 degrees 57 east, on the 27th of March 1981, where he will board the nuclear icebreaker North Wind. Going. The cans are in place. No sign yet. Sit down. Warm up while it burns. I've brought two more crates to dry. Sit down. Warm up while it burns.
Through the door and up the stairs, quickly! It won't hold much longer! Captain, the rod shows formation of sea ice all along our course. The rod, as in the divining rod? Another clairvoyant gadget of yours. Sir, clairvoyance is for shamans. This is cutting-edge scientific equipment, virtually foolproof. Do you know why it is called the rod? Well, yeah, you had it, sir. Named after a divining rod, a stick used to search for water underground was real popular back in the days of wooden ships and navigating under the stars. Times change, but some things remain much the same. The ship must respect you. You must listen to her, understand her, talk to her, live with her one-on-one -on -one for many years. Then you become more than just a captain. You become a part of something bigger. That's great, but isn't it just pretty words? Sir, it seems to me all you've got to do is hold on to the wheel. When are you going to let me try, by the way? You don't waste any time, do you? Well, if you're keen, try this for now.
Everything's on empty, I checked. If you're close to the lifeguard post, I see one out there in an uncovered boat. If you find it, bring it here. Just be careful. Danko was one of them, and he was young and handsome. Handsome people are always courageous. And he said to his comrades, Stones are not to be removed by thinking. He who does naught will come to naught. Why should we exhaust our energies thinking and brooding? Arise! Let us go through the forest until we come out at the other end. After all, it must have an end. Everything has an end. Come, let us set forth. They looked at him and saw that he was the best man among them, for his eyes were aglow with life and strength. Lead us, they said, and he led them. Captain, a difficult stretch ahead. Should we go around? <laughs> a difficult stretch, you say? <laughs> we'll manage. We can't afford to lose a whole day. We might lose a lot more if it's as bad as it looks. My crew has been through a lot worse than that. <laughs> and they can certainly manage that little patch of ice. <laughs> but, sir, isn't it better to avoid difficulties altogether if we can? Are you suggesting I shouldn't have faith in my crew? It's not about trust, sir. It's about common sense. And do you think it makes common sense to navigate the Arctic for 20 years in a row? Can't you see there is real danger up ahead? Are you losing your courage? Have you been testing your rod again? Don't you know it's not the rod, it's the dowser? Ah, uh, just go to your cabin. You'll be safe there. 
This is insane. A divining rod. A stick. It doesn't matter what kind, it's immaterial. What matters is you. You just need to tell yourself to find water. Send this thought to the rod, and that's it. It works best when you can wander around fields and forests by yourself, letting your senses take over. But when you're followed by a crowd, finding water can be difficult. For this reason, many expert Dowsers search for water secretly, at odd hours, in order to get the privacy they need.
Check it out. Where the cables hold. Yeah, it's all right. We almost got it up. Come on. Just a little more. Wait. The stopper keeps sliding off. Damn it, this sucks. This one is empty as well. Everything I got out of the others I put into the diving suit. There is enough oxygen for about five minutes. All right, we've got what we've got. Hope it's enough. Go to the elevator, I'm sending it down. when getting out of the elevator. The water is real murky. Turn left immediately and look for me. I'll be in the boat. You were on the upper decks back then, and we're all down here. So we're just sitting here, minding our own business, and then, holy, the water just, wham, came pouring in. ripped along the seams like tissue paper. That was one hell of an impact. But we dealt with it, thank God. Got some padding, patched up the walls, made some struts, and then... you know the rest. First, it got hot. Then it got cold. Now it's weird. All the diving. What's happening out there? Watch out! There's a lot of junk at the bottom. Yo, come on! Watch out! It's barely holding together! Yeah, I know, it's murky as hell, I know. Come on, you're almost there! There are some rusty pipes there with some valves on them. I got some circulation going here so it doesn't freeze up. And listen, you watch your step. Don't touch those valves. The pipes won't hold. Hey, why am I telling you? You know that already. It's been like that for years. <laughs> That's done it. The frigging pipes. That's it. Now, if we don't drain them, they'll all be frozen solid by tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, enough with the talking. You're almost there. Get through the gate. Come on. Glory! to the side and then make a right. I'll head to the winch. We'll go from there. There should be a piece of wood there. 
We used it and some padding to plug the hole. I'll lower the support strut and you cut the lines with your blowtorch. Glory! Cut the lines on both hooks on the sides. Good. Okay, it's in place. I'm turning the engine on now. You watch the stopper. First stage complete. So he led them, Danko, and they followed him willingly, for they believed in him. It was a difficult trek. It was dark, and at every step the yawning bog swallowed people up, and the trees were like a mighty wall, barring the way. Their branches were closely interwoven, their roots were like snakes, reaching out in every direction, and every step these people took cost them blood and sweat. For a long time they went on, and the further they went, the thicker grew the forest, and the weaker grew their limbs. And then they began to murmur against Dunko, saying that he was young and inexperienced, and had no right to bring them here. But he kept walking at their head, his spirit undaunted, his mind unclouded. It's holding tight. Now, we just gotta turn on the pumps. They're straight ahead in the next section. Last time it wouldn't pump no matter what we did. There's gotta be a blockage somewhere. There's a broken pipe up here where some debris probably fell down. If something is blocking it down there, cut it with your blowtorch. Yeah, hell yeah, we got pressure, finally.
What are you doing? over the forest, and the trees whispered together menacingly, and instantly it became as dark as if here were gathered all the nights that had passed since the forest was born. And the little people walked on under the big trees amid the roar of the storm, and as they walked, the giant trees creaked sang a sinister song, and the lightning flashed above the treetops, throwing a cold blue light over the forest for a brief instant, disappearing as quickly as it had appeared, a 
and striking terror into the hearts of the people.
The nuclear icebreaker Northwind hit an iceberg at 2.16 a.m. on the 24th of March 1968. The vessel's bow and starboard suffered heavy damage, which resulted in partial flooding of the third deck and damage to the stern starboard crane. There were no casualties, and the ship is currently still afloat. Repairs are underway but may take up to a week. So what happened? We came across that iceberg three hours earlier than I expected. How did that happen? How could I screw up so badly? Was it one of those moments when nature teaches you a painful lesson, and you realize that even the most experienced dowser can get it wrong? To HQ, urgent. Considering the emergency, I feel that it is my duty, as an officer, to report that the wreck was a result of negligence and culpable inefficiency by the ship's captain. Breach of duty in the shape of ignoring ample warning from the collision warning equipment rod was the direct cause of the accident. 
My repeated appeals to the captain to deal with this threat were ignored. I further wish to inform you that the fact that the accident was not catastrophic was purely due to a set of lucky circumstances, especially considering the age and poor condition of the ship. I await further instructions. Berserk! Get his rifle before he kills us all!
Comrade officer? What is it? You have a reply from HQ. Really? That was fast. Will you inform the captain? Yes, of course. On your way to the captain then? Yes, we just received this. A reply from HQ. Take it easy. The time is not right. We'll get to it, understand? If you have anything else, the captain is in the cargo bay. I see. I was heading there anyway. of going up. I'm warning you! Stop! Get down! I'm asking you! I make no promises!
Don't even think of going up. I'm warning you! Stop! Get down! I'm asking you! I make no promises! Get down, I said! Get down! There you go! Down these steps! Quietly! of the lightning, the trees seemed to be live things that were stretching out long gnarled arms and weaving them into a net to catch these people who were trying to escape from darkness. And something cold and dark and fearsome peered at them through the dark foliage. It was a difficult trek, and the people who had set out on it grew exhausted and lost heart. But they were ashamed to admit their weakness. And so they poured out their anger and resentment on Danko, who was walking at their head. They began to accuse him of being incapable of leading them. Sir, I'm preparing a detailed report on the repairs. Would you say a week to get it all done? Go to the lower decks and you can see for yourself. They will explain to you that the repair time depends very much on the abilities of our crew members. 
as well as the abilities of the captain to perform his duties, like getting the ship to its destination while keeping the cargo and crew safe. So, why don't you get to it, sir? Because the recent chain of events, how do I say it, cast a shadow over your competence. Now listen here. Let me explain something to you. I am in command of this vessel until either I or my ship ceases to exist. This is not your ship, sir. You are a member of its large crew tasked with a certain role, and in regards to its future, that might be decided sooner than you think. Are you threatening me? Here's a message from HQ for a start. Thank mm -hmm. you. 